It's so core, it's so primal, um, you know, heaven versus hell with humanity caught in between, that um, we feel like we, as long as we stick to that core and we tell a simple but straightforward and really poignant story, that it doesn't matter that it's a sequel, that it, it, it can stand on its own. Any hints as to what the conflict's going to be or a little bit about the story that we're going to see? Um, yeah, there's going to be demons in it. Oh, uh, interesting. Oh. One of the Maybe big they'll get Uber hunted. Diablo. <laughs> One of the big things that we like to talk about is that, you know, the, the ga previous games have been about, you know, uh, one demon or a couple demons um, walking sanctuary and just the havoc of them just being there that right. was created. Uh, Diablo 3, this is the first of the games where it's not one demon just kind of hanging out in sanctuary or walking walking the, the planet. It's literally all of hell invading. Um, this is all out war on sanctuary. Um, hell has seen the power that humanity has. They've seen what humanity can do. They've destroyed the three. Um, and they're not taking any chances. They've decided to cut and run. And their philosophy is we're going to burn it all down. So. You know, players really need to be ready for um, a hell on earth in a way they've never seen before. I can't wait. <laughs> Sounds epic. All right, Jay, one more question for you from Twitter. This one comes from Robin uh, from Sweden. That's I think it's all Asia. the international folks are now writing in. They're telling us where they're from. So <laughs> hopefully they're they're being honest. Uh, Robin <laughs> is asking, is Diablo going to be a pay a month's game or just once you buy it, you have it? A subscription game yeah. or are you going to buy it in a box? Well, you know, we haven't actually decided on the financial model yet. Um, but, you know, Diablo go, is going to go into a lot of different regions, and every region is different. Right. So some regions um, don't like subscription models. Some regions prefer nothing else but subscription models. Right. So exactly how we're going to sell Diablo 3 shifts is going to shift so much from place to place, it's a very hard to answer that question. Okay. And if we answered it unequivocally in any way, we're right. essentially going to be not telling the truth in one region or another. What we can say is we're going to look for a model that really makes sense for every region. Uh, we're not going to try and enforce a model on a region that doesn't make sense. But here in North America, it's typically been just a box at a yeah, store. It's it has same? typically been that, but we don't know yet whether that's going to be the case here or with Diablo 3. What I can say is um, I believe every Blizzard game has done incredibly well because you get an amazing value for what you put into it. Yeah. Um, and we will make sure that Diablo 3 is exactly the same. Fantastic. All right. Cool. That, Paul Sam's actually alluded to this as well, that there are different business models in different regions. Can you give me an example of a different business model outside of North America that maybe gamers aren't familiar with? Well, in, in um, uh, Asia is a really good example because uh, box sales don't work there at all. Right. Um, there, um, they tend to be ruled by microtransactions or pay-to-play models, which are kind of like very short duration subscriptions. So um, those, those models work really well over there and are very foreign over here. Um, there are some, you know, games over here that do it, but not very many. And as a result, like, the, it's really, they really con conflict. Trying to enforce their model over here is not going to work. Um, and trying to do ours over there is not going to work either. So mm. it's really trying to figure out, again, what's the best model for each region? Because, you know, as a company, we really want to make sure that we give the best game experience to everyone who plays the game. And we, we're really conscious of e each culture and each, each area we go into. You know, when we go into a new region, we really do it with an intent to make a game specifically for them as much as possible. So Jay has it all figured out. He's just not He's telling got us it. yet. What is one of your no, biggest I really, regions? I really, I really don't. I really don't have it all figured <laughs> out. I, I really like things uh, to do with uh, zombies and puke and fire and right. demons. <laughs> Business <laughs> models. <laughs> not so much. Not really my thing. Just make a fun game. All right. Yeah. We'll have to pin down Paul Sands when he comes back. Yes, Paul is a great thing. person yeah. to talk to about such things. We where, will have to talk to him. Where's one of your biggest uh, fan bases outside of North America? That just an area that's crazy about Diablo. The, the great thing about Diablo is um, it, it's been very popular in every region that it's gone Notice into. Notice our Twitter questions, Kat, yeah. from all I around know, the world. They come out for Jay Wills. So. so we, we <laughs> have that luxury in that it's hard for us to pick. I will say, it, it, I don't know for sure. I've never, I haven't seen the numbers. As I said, I'm not much of a numbers guy. Right. But I've always, I've always been told that um, we're very, that Diablo is very popular in Europe. Um, but I also know that we have a big, uh, a big following in Asia as well. All right. Well, thank you very much, Jay. Uh, congrats on the announcements today. We will uh, hear much more about Diablo over the next couple of days here at BlizzCon.